Hi, it's Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. Welcome to the Table Clits for June. We have a lot of fun designing this one. Of course, there's the strawberry and the strawberry blossom. Be sure to go to the Shabby Fabrics homepage to click on the free download that's at the very bottom. There's this project as well as so many others and of course all the table glitz from the previous months are available for download as well. Um, you can also click in the link below if you're watching on YouTube. So let's jump right into the project. Of course you will need the download so that you have the drawing of the strawberry as well as the blossom. Tape those together as you've done before. We do have this available as a kit in the kit if you do buy that from us, available exclusively from Shabby Fabrics. The top of the strawberry, the center of the blossoms, and the strawberry seeds will be prefused and laser cut for you with a fusible webbing, which makes it so easy. No cutting and no tracing. Um, otherwise, if you will be using your own fabric, you'll be using the diagram. I'll be using the Wafer 2 light box from Daylight and simply take your fusible webbing and you would trace the top of your strawberry, the green portion, and be tracing also your seeds as you would expect on the paper side. Don't use a friction pen, you'll be using a permanent marking pen because you will be using some heat with that. So you'll be just tracing that here and doing that for as many of the placemats as you're planning. And also the seeds roughly cut around the drawn line. Place that on the back side of the green and in the case of the strawberry seeds on the black and then cut on the line. So if you want to skip that step, again, that's why we just love our kits here, is you can jump right into the sewing fun, which is of course very fun with these beautiful glamorous threads, which we'll be going into a little bit later. So here's the top of our strawberry. Now for the strawberry itself, you'll want to trace two of them. Keep your fabric either right sides together or wrong sides together because of course you'll want those to be reflected. You'll, want, you'll need two strawberries and you'll be simply cutting directly on the line in order to get those two strawberries. Um, I'm going to go ahead at this point and I'm going to iron that upper portion onto my strawberry. I'm going to wait to put the seeds on till later. They're small. And sometimes as you're turning a project through, uh, if there's too much contact or friction as you're turning the project through, those might kind of actually start to come detached before I have a chance to sew them down. So let's, let's iron the seeds down a little bit later. I'm done with the light box, so let's put that down here for now. Iron to this one. Here we are, our upper portion. Anytime you're using the Prefuse laser cut applique shapes, we recommend a medium heat iron. I have that ready to go. I love how with the laser shapes, everything just lines up beautifully. I like precision. I like everything to just match. All right, and on the, on the other strawberry that does not have the top portion on it, that's why we'll just iron the fusible fleece to that. So you could, let me put that aside for now. You can just lay that down, kind of get that on there any way that you want. And I like to save my fusible fleece, so you're just going to iron that down as you would expect. I try not to let the iron make too much contact with the um, fusible because this is sticky and that can get on your iron. You might even want to use an applique pressing sheet to cover over that so if some glue does come in contact, um, it kind of oozes out the edge. It's in contact with the applique pressing sheet and will peel right off once it cools versus being on your iron. So that's just something to think about. So you'll just continue to iron that down and again roughly cutting around that. Now I've prepared one ahead of time so we can jump right into the next portion of the project. We not only have the fusible fleece on the back, we went ahead and marked our opening with our two and a half by six and a half inch Creative Grids ruler. And I like to leave a nice big opening. It's very easy to turn this edge. It's not, you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward to turn that edge. So I like to leave a nice big opening. Looks like five and a half inches. And I like to just give that a nice mark with my friction pen, sewing a quarter of an inch around. We pinned out here outside the seam allowance so that we could leave the pins in, which just helps the project stay together while you are sewing it um, together. Now in these, more significant areas where you have some bulk 
and you want that to turn smoothly. I might even kind of come in here and cut away some of that fabric so I don't have quite as much bulk in the transition in those corners. So I snip a little bit in there and if necessary, go in there and trim away, making sure I don't go too deep as to cut my thread. Now pins away. These are the clover pins with the magnetic pin cushion, which I love. I, uh, before I had a magnetic pin cushion, I would find pins everywhere on my table and here I love, even if I do miss them, I can just go quickly pick them up. It makes it definitely, I don't lose my very valuable pins. So we'll just turn it through. Now I was able to find a really neat, you've seen those seam creasers, point turners, one from Clover here I absolutely love. It's the point to point turner. It's longer than the other ones that I've used in the past and I just love the way it fits in my hand. It's, it, it just has this beautiful curve here and for areas that are, are more delicate, I need to really kind of get those points out. Um, I love that point on this one. And again, that's from Clover. So that's a very worthwhile investment as well. I don't have a lot of notions actually in my sewing room. If you've watched any of my videos before, I've, I've talked about this. I don't think it's about quantity of things. It's about getting the best of what you do need and using it again and again. So you're really familiar with your notions. So I'm gonna definitely need to use that to get that point out of the, the stem of the strawberry. Feel it in there. So I'm going to start to pull it out, push it out, but I'm going to really use that tool, the pointy end of that tool, to help get that out. That would be much more difficult to achieve on my own. This portion I'm going to use to really round that out. Okay. I I really needed both ends of this. What was interesting, as I was turning this through, I kept trying to use this point, but then when I finally realized that that shape of this is, a, is almost identical to the shape of that, and I put that up in that point, oh my gosh, that was fantastic. So, you really do use both ends of that consistently. And the fact that it's longer it just gives you more kind of leverage with this, which is fantastic. All right, let's iron that out here. Uh, the top portion comes off a little bit of the applique. Don't worry, you're gonna be stitching that down. And this is where I love to use, again, Wonder Clips, or you could use pins. I, I really do enjoy the Wonder Clips very much. So I'm gonna turn this under the quarter inch like we've done before. Quarter inch as best I can. Sometimes it's easier if you just do one side at a time, that side, and we'll just flip it over here. Do the other, and this is where I love to use my Wonder Clips. Close that side up. And if you're ever, you know, binding a quilt, I love these clips. They just hold everything together, then they're fun to work with. They're not, you're not poking yourself as you work through the project. Okay. So, of course, that's when, we'll, that's when the thread set comes in. Now we have a poly light this time and the thread set for the bobbin. We wanted to have a beautiful red on the back and this poly light is so beautiful and we used this beautiful hollow shimmer for the top and we went ahead and stitched around our uh, strawberry with the hollow shimmer on the top, poly light in the bobbin. And then for our green, of course we brought in this beautiful green and you can just see how sparkly this is here. Now this is exactly when you'd go ahead and add your uh, seeds just you know and that's just visually looking where you want those and we went around the seeds actually with this gold because as we discovered with seeds they're actually not black they're more kind of on the greenish yellowish side but 
we went ahead to go with black because it's a little more profound, it's a little bit cuter, um, but we did go ahead and go stitch around those a little bit of gold um, because strawberries do have that kind of goldish, uh, the strawberry seeds have that goldish color. Now let's go ahead and move on to our strawberry blossom. Let's just put that right underneath here. This was a lot of fun too. A um, little bit of a different assembly technique this time. Just like before, you'll go ahead and download that for the coaster. You'll be tracing two of the white, one with the fusible fleece. And in this instance, you're just going to sew everything all the way around and not leave an opening. You're like, Jennifer, you've lost your mind, which may be true, but not in this instance. So two layers together, fusible fleece, sew all the way around, clipping in the corners, um, as you, I trimmed away the excess fusible fleece and clipped in these corners and you're saying, how is this possibly going to work? Very simply, you will peel, pull this away, okay? And we're just gonna make some slits right in the middle. It's very important you slit in the middle. Let me tell you where we're gonna go with this so you know how the ending's gonna be so you do this properly. Basically, we're gonna make a slit and turn this thing through and the center of the flower is going to cover up the opening. That's why it's very important. You do go ahead and make the slit in the center where the yellow portion of the project will be. And what I typically do with projects like this is I kind of start small. You can even cut a little hole like that or simply make slits and only do as much as you need to. If it's too snug to turn through, then go ahead and make it larger. And then you'll simply turn the project through, again, using your point-to-point -point turner to help you get that nice and smooth. And, uh, and then you'll be like this, and you'll have your slit as such. And we will be peeling the fusible fleece, excuse me, the fusible uh, paper off and ironing that down. However, before I do that, before I do that, Notice how on the flower itself, we have these pretty accents that help give it the look of separated petals. Now, I'm just going to be looking here, and I see the natural arc coming in, and I'm just mimicking this. This is just a visual target. I'm just, doesn't need to be precise, doesn't need to be exact. It's just a suggestive stitch to give it some arc. Now, this is a friction pen. I do want you to make sure you're using a friction pen for this because like right there, I didn't like that. Favorite magic trick of the day, iron it away. I love that. I love that about a friction pen. So let's let that cool down and I will trace that again where I like it. We want to go ahead before I put this little button down and cover up that center, we went ahead and stitched the lines of the flower, stitched all the way around the perimeter in the gold. Then we put the center on and stitched around. The reason that we did that is that stitch and that can, cut, can come into the center versus you having to try to start here clip your threads and those potentially unraveling right there. Having them dive underneath the center just secures them all the more. Now I'll be using the thread director today. I love the thread director with metallic thread and the Schmetz metallic needle is very important. The combination that you have here is very important. I would like you to practice on some extra fabric before you dive into the actual, your placemats or your coasters. You need to maybe manipulate the tension on your machine depending on how it behaves with the metallic thread. So just know anytime you're using specialty threads that you might have to make that adjustment. Now in order to make the thread stand out just a little bit more, we went over everything two times with the metallic. I'm going to start in the center, go to the edge, pivot, and come back and ending at the center. So let's do that together. Okay, and I used to be afraid of metallic thread because I had breakage. Now that I'm using the thread director, it is simply not a factor. So I'm going to go to the edge. Pivot. And come back. Right over the line where I was.
How fun is that? So you'll do the other veins, then you'll come back with this in the center, ironing that down. Of course, these lines will disappear as I add heat. You're like, why are they disappearing? Because they're supposed to, it's a friction pen. And then you'll simply stitch around the center and your project will be complete. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to make the table glitz for June with Shabby Fabrics.